Um, no, um, okay, I got the visualization of Warrior One. So, all right, so you're basically in a lunge position with your hands stretched up to the sky. You're, to the side. you're focusing the on breathing. When you make the movement, you have to suck the core in or? Yeah, so for that one, you want to make sure your core is tight, your hips are open and your chest is open. And you want to make sure that your chest is up. Because oftentimes what people will do when they're in a pose is that um, gravity. Mm. So you will find yourself sometimes with your chest down and it's harder for your lungs to, for you to breathe, right? Because your lungs are compressed. So you want to open your chest and look up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And to breathe keep in through the nose, out breathing. the mouth, or? Um, in through your nose, out through your nose. In through your nose, out, out through your, your nose. nose. Unless it's called your ujjayi breath. Then you're breathing out of your mouth, but that's a more powerful, they say more powerful breath. Oh, but if you're just trying to be mindful and relax, right, you would want to just breathe in through your nose and out through your nose. In through your nose, out through your nose. That seems so anti athletic. Because everything, you know, sports is always about yeah. you breathe through your nose and you exhale out through your well, mouth. Same in science, right? If you exhale out of your mouth, you're not getting all that air into your alveoli. Mm -hmm. right? So you're not getting the full oxygen out of like the full capacity that your body can get out of that oxygen that you're breathing in. Okay. So same thing when you when when I'm cycling, the instructors always tell me, because you're like breathing out of your mouth because you're yeah, just so yeah. tired, right? But just to breathe slowly in and out through your nose. Okay. That's interesting. And hold your breath. Uh tree pose? Mm-hmm. So tree pose, it's like pretty much just <laughs> but your foot is all the way up to here. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I know. That. So tree pose, this is a balancing posture. It's a hip opener. And for this posture, when you have your foot onto your other leg, you want to make sure that it is not on your knee. Because if Above you balance, your knee? it's not on your knee. So it can be lower than your knee if you can't, if you're not able to pull it all the way up. Okay. But the last thing you want to do is put it on your knee. So it stretches your quadricep and your hamstring? Yes, and it opens your hips, right? Okay. So then, yeah, if the most important for that one is to not put your leg on your knee. Okay, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, because then you're going to add stress to that knee and that's... And that okay. works the core group? Your core... Um, so yes, that'll work your core, your spine, your hips. It opens up your hips, right? Because it's natural for us, especially if you have a desk job, an office job, right? So especially for women, crossing your legs often. Mm. So what happens is that Oh, I don't know what that is. Huh? <laughs> so it's natural for your hips to turn in. Okay. And for that pose, you are forcing your hip to turn out and pull out with your standing hip. So when you do the tree pose, it's important to not have the foot on your knee, mm -hmm. and you must have this, your, the leg that's bent must be pushed out. Yeah, you're rotating it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. So what helps me with my yoga and what I was learning about it is that constantly think of rotations, right? Okay. And, and you breathe through your nose. Breathing, yeah. Breathing and in and out. Also, breathing for yoga helps you find your balance. And if you're focusing on like this muscle hurts, that muscle, like I'm gonna fall out, just focus on your breathing. Yeah. And for that pose, it's, it becomes harder if, so you have your hands on prayer position, right? That's the easier version. If you have your hands over your head, that becomes harder for people to balance. And then sometimes people will close their eyes. Whenever you close your eyes yeah. and you're in a balancing pose, it becomes a lot harder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how long do you hold it? How long are we holding these poses? So it depends on the person. Um, I, instead of saying hold it for five seconds, I like to say hold it for five breaths. Okay. Right? So at least that way it's also more of a calming effect for you. Okay, next pose. The next pose is the, let's see. Oh, the standing forward bend, Uttanasana. Right, so it's just 
Just you standing, reaching for your toes. Okay. All right, so this will be good for your spine. And gravity is doing most of the work here. You should not, you should, every single time you have a pose like that, don't curve your back. Okay. You want to think of your stomach touching your thighs and not curving your back like this, right? So think of your stomach touching your thighs Understand. so that your spine is straight and flat and relax your neck for this one. Um, if your hamstrings are too tight and you cannot touch your toes, that's fine. Um, bend your knees a little bit to help you out. It's more important to let gravity do the work rather than forcing it and then you could have an injury. Okay. Is there a counter pose? Counter pose for this one would be the backward bend. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is there a counter pose for the tree pose? Um, doing it on the other side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the standing postures. Right, I had a couple examples for that one. And then for the floor pose, this one, it's called Margiasana, the cat cow pose. Have you seen it? <laughs> like you're like a cat and oh, a cow. Oh, okay, okay, right? okay. So for this one, it's important to make sure that your shoulders are directly above your wrist, not forward, not behind. Um, this will also be good for strengthening your wrist, right? Or I like to do this pose just to strengthen my wrist too. And like bending them the other ways, right? And for this one, it's very simple on the floor. A neutral, start with neutral spine and then do cat pose and then cow pose, exhaling and inhaling slowly. Five breaths again. Five breaths. Hold your gut in. Sorry? Hold hold your stomach in, but don't hold bend your in. back. Yeah, don't bend your but back. But you have to sort of bend your back, right? Um, so you're making a C. Yeah. Right? And then you make another C the other way. Yeah. Yeah. We, in tennis, normally call it the seal. We call it the seal. Mm -hmm. But we don't do the reverse. We don't do the reverse. The reverse by this? Yeah. That's what you mean? We okay. do the seal with, with our stomach on the ground. Stomach on the ground. Us going backwards. But we don't do the reverse, which is interesting. Yeah, perhaps we should do the reverse. You want, yeah, you want to do um, a counter pose yeah, for that, yeah. right? Yeah. So is this like the daily routine kind of thing? Like you come out and you do like these five poses? Or you suggest maybe just three or four poses a day yeah, switch? I, I suggest what I, listen to what your body needs. If it's your shoulders that's hurting, if that's what you think needs some stretching, do the shoulder stretches, right? Um, the, and then if it's your back that's uncomfortable, if it's your hips, do more hip openers. Um, I think that, I mean, you only have so much time in a day, and if you feel like you have to do all these poses every single time you do yoga, then someone might get demotivated and not do it. Okay. okay. Are we, are you done talking about your poses, or I don't know? Um, there's other ones, but I can just talk about it in the other video and show it.